Ah, oh, thank you, God. So we are going live. All right, we are live. Excellent. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this special. Uh, it, it is a very special uh, show today because it's my birthday. So I very agree. There it is. Go ahead, Linda. Miss Linda. Oh, we are all celebrating Kat's birthday, all of us. <laughs> So happy you. birthday, Kat. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. And I really wanted to, it was kind of, oh, it was selfful. I don't call it selfish. I'll call it selfful that I wanted to hang out with Linda and Jaylene today um, to help celebrate my birthday, but also to, to bring that to you as well, um, our, our audience and our friends, because today, December uh, 14th is also a solar eclipse. And that has a very specific resonance of energy that we're going to get into our, our conversation with um, Jaylene. So, but I also, let's, let's just formally introduce Jaylene Tracy. Hey, Jaylene, thank you so much for being with us here with us today. Hi, everybody. And hello, Catman and Linda. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here. It's fantastic. Very excited to have you. Yes. And happy, happy birthday. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. It has been, I will be honest, it's been an emotional birthday. Not what I was expecting, um, but I'm blaming it on the uh, solar eclipse and Jaylene said I could do that. So um, that's what I'm blaming it on. For sure. Um, For sure. <laughs> I pulled myself together now. Uh, but um, so we are definitely going to hop into this conversation. But first and foremost, I want to read Jaylene's bio. And this bio is it's girthy, it's girthy. It's got a lot of content. And um, so we'll, we'll I, I feel like I could read this bio and then do the interview based on picking apart the bio, but we're gonna go through this and um, it's gonna give you a really great sense, resonance of what Jaylene is about and her journey. And then we will dive in. So here we go. Jaylene Tracy is a vibrational, gen uh, geneticist who channels light and sound vibrations to create shifts in the energetic, emotional, and physical elements of the body. Working with multidimensional light beings, she identifies areas of imbalance, disease, and disharmony in the body and channels specific tones to address each one. The vibrational gen genetics modality was developed by Jaylene during her work with clients as a body talk practitioner when she began to connect with several multidimensional beings who offered her help and guidance during session during healing sessions and so these are the mantids the arcturians and also the divinians and i want to get into the divinians here in, in a minute one such group is a council of compassionate guides known as the mantis the mantis are an ancient race of beings who are here to support earth's and humanity's ascension. They are adept healers and geneticists who bring their wisdom and insight to earth during this unprecedented, unprecedented time of change and, poten and potential for the human population. Jaylene's interest in science and DNA began at an early age as she and as she discovered later was encouraged by her mantis guides throughout her life. The mantis emanate deep, compassionate, um, deep compassion and create the space for healing and resolution of discordant electromag electromagnetic and emotional energy affecting the physical body through the use of sound. They offer their wisdom of the earth, how the new electromagnetic, electromagnetic environment we live in can be understood and adjusted to and how to incorporate sound into your life for healing and well-being, well -being for all of us. I'm only mangling every other sentence, so that's great. <laughs> Um, through Jaylene's work with the mantis and other extra dimensional beings, she has reawakened her deep connection to the earth and its healing power. As we are an integral part of the whole Gaian system, humans function best when, an active, when in an active relationship with earth and the web of life. Earth represents a key component to our healing, longevity, and well-being, knowledge that indigenous and ancient peoples across the globe have understood for thousands of years. Through the Mantid's teaching, Jaylene has learned how to channel the song of the Earth's logos to bring healing, guidance, and DNA realignment to her higher consciousness. I'll just kind of bookend the last paragraph here. She has a biology, she has a degree in biology from Smith's College with an emphasis on 
<laughs> molecular biology. I don't normally careen this badly and spent uh, 15 years in biotech industries working with uh, startups for revolution, uh, revolutionizing healthcare. And she also has um, experience and training in healing modalities such as Reiki, theta healing, shamanism, body talk, and herbology. So boom, I have said all of that. Nice job. Nice job. Oh man, <laughs> I, I did what I could with what I got. Um, <laughs> I literally read that through like five times and I still, anyway, it's all good. So um, Miss Jaylene, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, one comment about the bio, you know, when you have the mantis or the Arcturians write your bio for you, then it's going to have those types of words in it. <laughs> it just goes with the territory. Sorry. <laughs> No, it's, it's great. It's, it's profound. Um, it's just because it, it's so it's, it's like one of those things where you want people to understand. And Jolene and I were talking about this before the show, like, we really want to and Linda as well, before we got the ball rolling, we want to be able to cross that bridge of genetics and you know, new age or metaphysical or whatever you want to call that in such a way where those can be merged and are made more accessible. Because you know, Jaylene has been interested in science since she was a wee child. It was always her, her ambition, her goal, her thing was like, I'm going to be a scientist. Nope, I'll be a scientist. Nope, I'll still be a scientist. And that's just been there for her. So for her, it's very natural. But for those of us who are more comfortable being in the etheric and the um, spiritual, it's great to have somebody who can speak both languages to translate it. Yeah, you know what, in that, it really does feel like a big part of my purpose here is to bridge the gap between what can seem so confusing or mysterious to some who are not scientific in the scientific realm, and then vice versa, for those people in the scientific realm, the whole metaphysical stuff feels so inaccessible and wacky and weird and out there. And so I really feel like I stand right in the middle of those two worlds. And I really would like to bring them closer together, bridge that gap, help people from both sides, both worlds understand that actually neither one of them is really that different from each other at its true form, that really they're all one and the same. It's just a different way of expressing the same thing. Oh gosh, I feel like that's a fundamental piece to stand on because once you get into quantum healing and quantum physics, that's when you're like, oh, this, this is just like the left side, this is the right side, or this is the front, this is the back, but it's the same. Right. It's, it's the, the same, same stuff. Yes, exactly. And I do believe that metaphysics is a way of all of us accessing some of these deeper, more complicated scientific um, concepts that you really need to have a lot of very precise and well-advanced equipment to confirm or to um, prove in a lab. You know, when I say prove, prove the way science wants things proven. Um, but it's very accessible if you come at it from that metaphysical place and you just think about things or allow your guidance or your higher self to bring that information to you, you're going to get to some of those same concepts, but because you're not getting to it in using the same steps of deductive reasoning or the experimental protocols that scientists, you know, insist on for rigor, then they don't put a lot of credence into those type of epiphanies that come from people exploring metaphysical or, you know, multi-dimensional realms, because it just to them seems like wacko stuff. It doesn't seem like something that they took those, they want to take those linear steps and they want it to be proven. And then they want it peer reviewed and then they want it to be torn down and then proven beyond shadow of doubt, you know, they're <laughs> and so, um, I think that a lot of people in the metaphysical community have been accessing these ideas of quantum physics for a long time, but they, well, probably for thousands of years on this planet, yogis and whatnot, you know, sitting in caves and figuring this stuff out. How did they know 5,000 years ago, some of the same things that quantum physics is discovering now? Well, it's because all of that information is all around us in the field all of the time. It's just about, you know, how you access it. Yeah, I feel like that's exactly right on. It's like, how are they able to know? Because it's truth, because it's there, it's in. Exactly, it is what it is. Yeah, it's like the Akashic yeah. Records. It's like the quantum field, any of those things, 
it, it exists within and outside of space and time. Mm -hmm. And the thing is to learn how to bridge the gap so that it's, it becomes self-evident and it's no longer something, I mean, it's good to poke a stick at something to see if it's true. You wanna put it through the test. Linda is really good about whenever she's doing a modality and learning modality, she's very rigorous. Like, you're gonna to have to prove yourself to me. You're gonna, like, I like, you gotta be real. Uh -huh. I think that's Linda so with a why. <laughs> <laughs> Linda with a Y, exactly. Linda with a Y. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and my experience is as I become more comfortable with my psychic self and how my empathy connects into the, the 5D realm, the quantum realm, whatever you, know, you want to label that, it's like, oh, this is here. You're going to bump into it because it's there. And people have been bumping into it from, from many different angles, from many different places. But when it's truth, it's resonant. And it's, I'll be like, oh, don't forget that. I'm like, you don't have to worry about forgetting it. It exists. It's already there. You'll just bump mm -hmm. into it again. You know exactly. What I mean? Exactly. That is so true. Um, and I would also bring that into the analogy of sometimes um, when I'm working with clients and I, you know, I'm diving into their energy field when I'm working with them in that moment and I'm getting a whole story about them. As soon as I'm done with a session, the whole thing goes away. As soon as I see them again, it can be three months. It can be a year later. It's as soon as I go into their energy field, it's like, it's all right there again. And I don't think about it at all in between because I can't really remember it until I get back into that space with them. And this is, I think, you know, this is the same thing. That's where I first started to notice it. And then I agree with you that the information is the information. The energy is in the field. And that's what we're accessing. It's all, it's really all it is about learning how to access the field. And once you've learned how to access and spend time in the field and elongate those times that you spend in the field and learn how to be in the field simultaneously and also be here and also be able to focus in on this dimensional field, that's really where we're heading as a human race, right? The ability to hold that multidimensional focus. And I think that's, you know, what the guides talk about a lot is that, you know, all of that information is there. You have access to it. You don't need to be born, quote unquote, a psychic, right? That gave those people a much easier entree into all of that, but it's a muscle in the brain. It's an opening. It's a release of trauma from your emotional field, from your Akashic field. It's a process one can go through to become more and more open and have more and more access to the field. So I just wanted to add that angle too, because I think that it brings it home into something that's tangible for all of us. It's like, yeah, this is day-to-day -day life. This is where we're headed as a race. Yes. Um, Go ahead, Lynn. I want to say too, in, in some aspects, you're bringing in um, something, right? the words that kept coming were evidential metaphysical mm -hmm. experiences where mm -hmm. If you have an evidential mediumship, you're giving actual evidence. It's not, it's right. not, hey, your dad's behind you and he really loves you. Really? That's, <laughs> that's interesting. But if, when you bring in something that is a little bit more tangible into this world, yeah. that somebody can look at and go, oh, I can see that. I can relate to that. That's in this world. That's what you're doing is, mm -hmm. is being able to meld those. Yeah. And I think that um, because we came to be physical beings, that a lot of that evidential information comes through the body and through understanding what's happening in someone's body in that moment as a reflection of everything else that's happening in the way that they're accessing the field of information around them. Because that's really, because we came to be physical, that's where we have seen and witnessed a lot of the way we hold energy and resistance and trauma in our body. We've seen it emit out of us through the physical. We've seen issues or cancer or you know other diseases coming up in the body. Um, and that I think is helpful for people to relate also to a lot of this. It, it, and often that's the time when somebody would come to see someone like you or me or, or Kat, when they have gotten to that point in their physicality where they finally say, okay, I'm ready actually and open to some more information that can help, help me heal. 
and that healing may, they may come for a physical healing, but as we know, it always encompasses the energy and all aspects of their being. It's, it's not just the physical because the physical is only one aspect of us. Well, right. And it's like the physical body is a diary of what your emotional and subconscious mind have collected. Like the physical body is this like repertoire of like, well, you believed this. So therefore I have this. Well, you think this, therefore I manifest this way. And it's just indicating to you what your thoughts have coagulated (laughs) into the physical form, you know? And one of the things I'm tuning into is that like when you are with a client, oh my gosh, there's so much I want to talk to you about. It's just, I'm kind of bursting. But um, like when you're, so you you work with the Arcturians, you work with the Mantids or the Mantis Uh and you work with the, um, the Divinians. Yeah. One of the things is that when some, you're working with somebody, you know, there's that thing of the objective truth, but there's also subjective truth when your body flips into a resonance, when your emotions go through a release, somebody says something to you or like with you, you literally are channeling sound through your vocal cords. You're not using a crystal bowl, which no, no, no dissing on anything. Whatever modality works for you is awesome. And if you have the ability to you know, bring it through your physical instrument and you're doing it through your voice, I love sound healing. I've been doing that you know, on and off for, for decades myself. Um, but my sense is, is that when you have somebody on the table and they experience a healing, it's very visceral for them. Wouldn't you, what would you say about that? Completely, 100%. It is a very visceral experience. And even when it's somebody that I'm connecting to over Zoom, it's the same thing. It's very visceral because energy is visceral when it's interacting with our physical body in that way. And it is an experience it is that multidimensional experience because they're bringing the way I see the guides bring in um, information. It's, it's light and it's moving through the body's energy systems, through the meridians, through the chakras, it's um, sound waves, it's vibration, right? It's working with the DNA. It's shifting the DNA because the DNA is a vibratory field. That's truly what it is. It's, it's a vibratory field that is expressing you in the way that, that vibratory field is moving through because it is your DNA is both physical and it's both uh, etheric, right? It's got this aspect to it where there's layers of, of energy around your DNA that are vibrating and vibrationally matching to different things. So the expression, you may have a genetic material that has a set number of genes in it, but the expression and the way those genes are expressed has everything to do with the holographic DNA that you have around your physical DNA. So, yes. Sorry, I, that's a huge piece right there. I, 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 I want to be able to crack open that, that egg right there. Tell us about the difference between your physical DNA and your holographic DNA. I feel like that is something that, that's the bridge we're looking for right now. Yeah, and I think that that is where um, <laughs> the science and the metaphysics need to really need to come together, because we know that everything that every molecule, every atom is vibrating, right? And so the collection of atoms form molecules, and molecules to come together to form structures. And in the case of DNA, the structure of DNA, we know it has that spiral look to it. It looks like a ladder. There's bonds in between, right? And so it looks like a ladder. Um, that particular structure structure has a, has a morphic field, a, a vibratory field that it's eminent. Emin- now I can't talk. Thanks, Kat. Uh-huh, I'm, not I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it's emitting a vibrational field. And that vibrational field is vibrationally matching energy that is flowing through you through your akashic field so i always see the energy of your akashic field flowing into the body through different portals but the probably the biggest portal is your heart and there's a still point in your heart where energy from your oversoul meaning the conglomeration of you know your big balloon your big you your big soul um all your lifetimes all the energies that are you all the experiences you've had um past present future that's all flowing through you and vibrating through your DNA, through that portal in your heart. And so when your DNA is vibrating, it's 
um, and depending on what you're experiencing in that moment, it's like this trifecta of what you're experiencing in the moment, the way it's resonating through your physical DNA, and then all of that information that's coming in from your Akash, from your soul families, from your ancestors, and how that is also forming this energetic field around your DNA to, I would say, highlight different aspects of your DNA's expression so that you'll have certain experiences in the physical as well as in the mental and the emotional. Because if you think about it, everything comes down to biochemistry in the body, right? You have an emotional response. That's all biochemical. That's happening in your brain. That's happening as a result of your brain's response to something that's happening in your environment. You're having an emotional response. That's biochemical. You're having a hormonal response. You know, that's uh, women think about this a lot. That's biochemical. You're having an immune response, biochemical. You're having a nervous system stress response, biochemical. So all of this stuff is happening biochemically, but why are you responding that way? You're responding that way because you've got all this influence of energy coming in. So your DNA is literally constantly being molded and shifted and expressed in a different way, depending on your current environment, interacting with the big environment of you, which is all of that other stuff that I just mentioned. Yeah. So the, here I'm going to kind of throw this back in my language to see if, if I'm grasping it. Cause I think this is how we break it down. Right. So what I'm getting is that like, I have got my physical mm -hmm. genetics, my physical genetics are kind of the hardwired lineage of what I've gotten, what I've inherited, as well as what I've inherited in this lifetime in terms of my, my emotional stimulus, which then created a chemical response in my brain, which now has created a neural network and create a neural conversation within my body. So I see a certain picture of somebody and a whole emotional thing happens. Somebody says a word, a whole emotional thing happens. That's my neural network being flooded with the chemicals. It's doing a whole, it's whole circuitry of what I've got going on. And some of that could also be passed down from my family as well. And then I feel like the holographic part that's, it's like, just bear with me and because <laughs> I really want to grasp this. So like we've got my genetics and then we've got the holographic part that's almost like a cocoon, an energetic cocoon around it. But the holographic part is being fed in from the Akashic. It's being fed in from my galactic ancestry. It's, it's like the light body that is living around my physical genetic structure. And what we're doing at this juncture of our evolution is learning how to thread those together so they're no longer separate but they're in harmony does that resonate or yes that is a wonderful way to describe it thank you kat that's really nice nice way to describe it it's it's like um all of your potential is also stored in that holographic DNA, that cocoon that you talked about, that energetic cocoon. And it's multi-layered, similar to when you think about um, the fact that there are different dimensional layers, right? We're in this third dimension, there's different different dimensional layers, your DNA also resonates and matches vibrationally to different dimensional fields as well. So there's different things happening that you've experienced in those different dimensions. And that's also coming in through those different layers. It's not really layers, but I see it more of like, um, like an atom where electrons are moving in and out of different areas or they call them shells, but it's, it's like, um, this energy that is blossoming and flowing in and out of your physical DNA, depending on your current experiences and depending on all of those influences that you mentioned as those are currently influencing you too. So one thing I'd like to say though, is it sounds like a very complicated system in which it would be very difficult for us to intervene or have any sort of sway over it. It sounds like, wow, all this stuff is happening outside of me. How do I affect change? Well, you did mention that we're going through a solar eclipse right now and that this solar eclipse is fundamentally important to us. One of the really exciting thing that's happening to humans right now is that we are becoming more and more capable of interacting with our hol holographic selves, with these amazing fields um, that we're in. And I can't hear you, by the way. Can oh, I'm just, we're just being oh, you're really quiet. Okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I just wanted to make sure that I'm we're a, not muted. <laughs> I'm an out loud processor, so when people are okay. talking, I'm like, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. <laughs> That's it's good. unusual for cats. Sure it's not unusual there. for me to be quiet in the background, but it is unusual okay. for cats. So okay. I don't blame you. <laughs> okay. I'm ready anyway, now. so <laughs> so we're moving through this eclipse, though. <laughs> we're moving through this eclipse, and this is a doorway. This is a gateway. One of the one of the gateways we've walked through. So this year has been invitation after invitation after invitation to really release, explore, understand old patterns of energy that have been pervasive in our field through many lifetimes, certainly vibrationally matched in this current lifetime. We've had the opportunity to see areas where we're holding resistance in our body, whether it's a physical issue where we're holding trauma emotionally in our body, you know, mental, emotional, spiritual issues, um, how that relates to hopefully the bigger pattern. If you've been able to have um, meditations where you've been able to connect to other past lives, or you've had someone to help you do that. Um, So we've had all these invitations. Well, this solar eclipse is kind of like a bookend to all of that. It really helps to tie it all together in a cohesive boundary. And then as we shift out of the energy of this eclipse over the next few days, then it's really our opportunity to start turning and to start greeting all of the potential that's coming in the solstice gateway on December 21st, where we're going to walk through, literally it's going to feel like all of your guides are around you and you're literally walking through with all of them because they've been awaiting this momentous moment in their eternal now. (laughs) So they've been there waiting for us, right? Um, and we're going to walk through with all of our guidance so that we can start to emerge and start to embrace more of this holographic nature of ourselves, right? The ability to have more say over the way our DNA vibrates and expresses itself, the, the ability to really fundamentally interact with these aspects of ourselves that felt like they were out of our reach, or they felt like they were beyond our control. But that's where we're heading. We're heading into a future where humanity recognizes itself outside of limitation and starts to embrace that idea that, no, I I really do create my reality every second of my life. I'm creating my reality because I am engaged in my environment. I am engaged in the energetic field around me. I am reading it. I'm feeling it. I'm sensing it. And that environment is not running roughshod over my emotions anymore. Instead, I'm actually experiencing it real time, recognizing sometimes where I feel like I'm starting to shift out of the state of equilibrium and into a state of perhaps fear or um, distrust or something. But then I'm able to say, oh, I see, right, that's happening, but that's okay. I'm going to just allow that to roll through me. It's going to roll through me and then I'm back to equilibrium and I'm really now again going to focus on what it is that I want to be bringing in or that I that I am. I am the I am. It's the whole I am presence starting to come into the now. And it's all about the I am. I am this. I am this. I'm This is who I am. This is how I am. It's not about, oh, I really want to be that tomorrow. It's this is what I am right now. So I said a lot there, but I really want to emphasize that because that's what grounds all of this metaphysical is that it's about where we're about to become immersed in, right? It's about what we're about to experience as a race. And that's what makes today so exciting is because today is sort of the bookend of all of that work that so many of us have been doing. Yes. All right. Miss Linda, hop in. I have, so I'm hearing already. Uh, a few people that I know when they watch this after today because the eclipse will already be done and they'll go, crap, I missed my opportunity. Now what? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so for those the, people no, that yeah. don't that see this later that say, I missed those signs, you know, I'm just now starting. Where do you, what do you have to say to those people? There is no one who has been immune to the releasing and the reintegration that has occurred this year. Just because today marks a flag in the sand that says, hey guys, take a break, take five. (laughs) Now it's time to focus on 
letting go and absorbing all that you have been releasing this year, everybody's been releasing. It's not just that today you do the release. It's that you've been doing it for the last 10 years. Maybe you've been doing it for the last two years, whatever, maybe just the last two months. You know, we've all had multiple opportunities to come into a greater understanding and a release of what it is that has been keeping us in limitation and keeping us from really experiencing ourselves in the truth of our being. And so it's really not something that's just happening today. It's something that we've been building towards for a long, long time. And right. for you, um, of what you've seen and what you know, when someone is resisting that or in resistance now or in the future, do you see common themes on how that shows up for people? Hmm. Yeah, that is the one thing that I would say for the people that have been particularly resistant to allowing <clears throat> the shifts and the sort of the deep dive into understanding what's driving some of the pain and the turmoil that they're experiencing in their life. Um, I do believe for those people, it will become even more obvious and more acute after the 21st of December, because what really is uh, something that the guides have brought in over and over again is that however you are vibrating after the 21st of December, whatever it is that you're matching, that, that you're feeling into, believing, holding intention on, whatever it is that you're focused on is really going to start showing up for you right in front of you in a really rapid way. So it's all about that instantaneous manifestation type of idea that we, I think, in the metaphysical community have been talking about for a long time, but it's really about personal responsibility. This is how it works. You've really got to be, um, and this is what the Arcturians have been talking to me about for years, about really human beings who start to understand how to manage and uh, flow their emotions out of their body in an intentional and purposeful way, as opposed to just, you know, like explosions and <laughs> vomitous emotions everywhere, <laughs> um, that those are the human beings that are going to start to have much more control over what they're seeing in their life and what they're experiencing over the way that they, um, their reality shows up for them. So for those people that are not paying attention or are not really participating in any way, yeah, lots of wacky stuff, even maybe wackier than what they've seen already is going to start showing up because um, there's going to be a harshness to it, an edge to it, because they're not actively engaging in, um, in a vibratory field that supports what they want to see. They're actually engaging in a vibratory field of just creating a whole lot more of what they don't want to see. And I feel like it's going to create almost like two realities for the people that are engaged consciously and the people that are not, it really feels like a bifurcation. Yes. Okay. I want to hop in there because that is what I see and hear over and over and over again from people from different disciplines in, in this realm. Like you think the metaphysical world is, is like its own little bubble. There are so many sub bubbles within that big within that big sub genre uh, within the genre of metaphysical there are many sub subs everywhere and so um this whole bi bifurcation dolores cannon has talked about it um there's just so many people who who have again like that connection with their guides like you have where they don't know each other but they're all seeing this time of, of a split and I think it's important to speak to that because it's not a punishment, it's our evolution. It is like, we've had so much gooey, gauzy, soft time to figure this out. And now it's the quickening, it's called the quickening, things are getting down to business. It's like, it's, it's, it's happening, it has to happen. It's part of our evolutionary journey, our spiritual evolution, it's called the ascension, call it Gaia's ascension. It's, it's here, it's upon us. It's kick and scream all you want or surrender into it because it's happening. 
And it's not from a place of harshness. It may feel harsh, but it's because you're not owning what you've created. And as cosmic galactic beings, when we keep acting like children and we keep being in this passive role of why is this happening to me versus why am I creating this or why am I allowing it? What's, why is this, what's the teacher showing up as you know the devil with horns today, but it's actually a teacher. Like the more that we resist our own sovereignty, our own relationship to what we're creating and how we create, yeah, you're gonna find more suffering. It's just the outcome by denying yourself your own power. Um, that's my little, that's my little soapbox. Um, so I wanted to step into this whole conversation about who your guides are so people can have a sense of that. Um, and I, this could be a whole show itself. Um, so would you let us know about your experience of who the Arcturians are, who the Mantids are, and who the mm -hmm. Divinians are? What is your experience of them? And I know that the Mantids started showing up. Mari, Mari the Mantid, your main uh, <laughs> guide, who's this, she has like, she's a like eight foot tall. You experience her as being eight foot tall, but really having this Mother Mary type of energy to her. She showed up when you were doing these, this work and you were like, I'm making that up. That can't really be happening. But it was like, lo and behold, this is part of your cosmic awakening into your galactic self. Give us a, a lowdown. Give us kind of a profile of who your guides are. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so Mari is the one that I feel has been with me my whole life. The one that has been sort of shepherding me along, um, kind of, you know, nudging me gently or not so gently in the direction of things that I should be doing. Um, things that probably I shouldn't be doing definitely making things, you know, I, I just feel like uh, she's been there the whole time sort of managing the process and not in a way that feels as though I haven't had any say over it. It's more like, I feel like we're partners, like we're in this together and that she and I have, you know, I'm sure we had some agreements before I came. And um, I think she also gave me a lot of space as a young person to just go um, F around because I did for a long time and I did not pay attention to all the stuff that was going on. I had some experiences as a young child um, that were very, um, metaphysical, for example, I was drawn to um, play the clarinet. And this is one of these stories that I really love because it wasn't until later that I kind of even realized the significance of what had happened. So in fifth grade, the, the band comes and they um, display all the instruments. And then you as a kid, you if you want to be in band, you pick one. You're like, yeah, I want to play that one. Well, I picked the clarinet, which seem, might seem an odd choice for a kid, but I was really um, intrigued by it. I wanted to play the clarinet. And then I got home and I told my mom, I want to play the clarinet. And she said, oh, well, we have a clarinet. And I said, okay. <laughs> and so um, we had a clarinet and it was up in the attic. And, and so I went up to the attic and I found this beautiful wooden clarinet in this case that looked pretty tattered, like it had really um, been through a lot. And anyway, so I start learning the clarinet. I play the clarinet. At one point during playing, um, I was on my mother's side of the house and I'm in this bathroom where the air always felt like that thick air. If you've ever been around spirit, you know, the air kind of gets thick. It can, sometimes it can get cold or it just, you just feel the texture of the energy change when spirit is around you. I was having one of those moments. I was in there where it kind of feels like time stands still. And then clear as a bell, um, I thought it was off in the room next to me. I heard clarinet playing. And um, at the time, I didn't know what I thought one of my siblings or I had a household, a lot of siblings and my parents. So I thought somebody was playing the clarinet or was playing um, music. And I ran out there and the there was no one there. And in fact, there was nobody in the house. The entire house was empty. My mom was outside in her studio. And so I ran out there, freaked out saying what, what, because I heard it so clearly. So I come to understand later that my mother's first husband who died in a tornado played the clarinet. He was playing that clarinet right before the tornado happened. And that very clarinet, the very same clarinet that I was playing as a child was saved and made it through the tornado, through all the rubble. And that um, I had been drawn to this instrument, I do believe, because I think that, you know, he probably wanted to have one of my mom's kids, even though I wasn't his kid, but have she's from a marriage after he passed. 
but play that instrument and he wanted to hear that instrument around. And so anyway, it was just a remarkable experience that I didn't really get the grasp of until later. So I was having experiences like that. And I'd had a few more things happen to me like that, where I was interacting with spirit, but, you know, I just wasn't ready for it. And so I spent my young life, not focused on that kind of stuff, but always, always, always with the science and the DNA. And anyway, so fast forward to when I was studying body talk and I was doing session after session after session and get certified. And I started to see Mari coming up through, like you said, she was this enormous being. She had this cloak on, she had this triangular head. I didn't know she was a mantis at first. I was actually having a reading with somebody else. And she said, there's mantis all around you. And I said, oh, that explains the triangular head. And then other people had mentioned that they saw her. And so really, I came to understand that this being had been around me all the time. Then I, she started showing me some visions of me in the crib and her standing right there. And um, anyway, so I've had this long relationship with her. She's very much like a mother to me and has that also that Mother Mary energy. She feels very warm, comforting, nurturing to me. She comes in and she helps people expand their compassion through their heart. The healing that happens is always through the heart with her. Um, and then along that path, um, before even that I had um, found Mari or discovered her, um, I had been very drawn to the Arcturians and connecting to their message. And I had um, listened to other people who channeled the Arcturians and talked about working with them. And when I heard their light language, it's like something lit up in me and absolutely brought, it's like, I could, I felt like I could understand what they were saying without really knowing, you know, exactly what it was when I would listen to the light language. Um, and so in my meditations, I started to connect more and more with their energy and I could really feel the vibration of them in my body. And then also with my healing, I noticed that they started showing up in my healing, meaning I would feel their energy and I would know it was theirs because it would always arrive in a um, white blue light or in a very blue light that would come in. Um, and subsequently the mantis work with a green light. The Arcturians work with this blue light. Um, and then the Divinians were a group that I started connecting to um, one night I was doing something where I wasn't really thinking I was focusing on, I was actually putting ornaments on a Christmas tree um, several years ago. And I just felt the presence of these beings come in and start to talk to me. And they um, started to share with me. They started to show themselves to me um, in my mind's eye. And, and they had these very large heads and, um, tapered down at the chins. They were explained to me that they're no longer embodied, but they are, um, this is what they look like. And the purpose of them coming in now is to help humanity to um, expand and to um, shift the way we think about aging of the brain, the function of the brain, um, neuroplasticity, um, new different plant substances, fungi substances that can help our brains working with the energy of the earth for our brain. So they bring in a lot of that wisdom um, because our brain being that central computer for the human body is really important for us to understand how to work with the energy of the brain um, because it's also, you know, it's, it's a tool of our nervous system. It's part of our nervous system. It's part of our way that we're decoding and understanding our environment. And so they recognize that for humanity to truly evolve, we have to evolve the brain. It's one of the fundamental places. We're evolving through the heart, but we really must evolve through the brain as well because it can be a very stubborn <laughs> aspect of our, of our expression that keeps us from truly embracing embodying what the heart brings to the table. Well, I, I feel like the brain is, the brain and, and consciousness, we are, are like, toddlers in the baby pool who don't get it yet like you mm -hmm. know and, and even the the people who are on the cutting edge it's like they're just the ones breaking the edge of the baby pool being like oh my god there's actually a whole there's an ocean over there you guys it's not just this little kiddie pool that we've been splashing around and thinking we're getting our degrees thinking that we've mastered it um because it's so much more vast than that 
And, you know, and I'll just, I want to talk about the Divinians for, for a moment, but I, I, I want to say like, one of the things that came through with a friend years ago was that like the heart, the heart is the brain of the soul. Mm -hmm. And our, our brain is the brain of the body, but the heart is the brain of our soul and our, and our soul understands things through the heart. And that's where its consciousness resides. Yeah. And then we have our conscious brain, which is in the body, but that's really like you called, it's really the computer interface for the body. It's there to process data, but our consciousness is in no way limited to the brain, right? It's just the hardware. Um, electricity goes through the computer, but electricity is not contained and confined by the computer, just like our electric spirit goes through the brain, but it is not confined by the brain. Um, it's just, it's the interface plug-in place for the physical dimension and experience. Who the heck are the Divinians? Where do they come from? So you can look up, you can Google Mantids, you can, or Mantis, Mantid, Mantis, however yeah. you want to, that yeah. is. And you can Google Arcturians, they're from, uh, you know, and so I would like to know who, where you experience them from, but I really want to know, because my ex feeling of the Divinians are that they're half celestial and half human, that there's some sort of a crossover between the two where they're, but what is your, what, who, who are the Divinians? <laughs> Where do they come from? Where, so, what's their origin when point? I first started connecting to them, they felt extremely far away to me. So the, um, the mantis feel right here to me. The Arcturians feel close, but a little bit further away. Um, and I'm speaking in just sort of generalities here, but the Arcturians feel like they're not that far away from us physically, right? Like they feel like they vibrate in a way that I'm very familiar with that feels familiar to me. The Divinians do not. They feel very 13th dimensional to me. They're, they're not, um, they, the way they vibrate, it's, it's a very high vibration, very celestial, and it's very far away. It doesn't feel like something I can access as easily. It's, it's something that is more of a tenuous connection that I have with them. They have always been there and they come in during sessions at times and they come in during my meditations and I feel like they show up when they want to and they, um, they don't, they're um, not as focused on humanity as say the Arcturians or the Mantis. They kind of come in and they drop these pearls of wisdom in for me and then they're sort of off again. So they feel like a group that is from a very, 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 um, I would say, um, ancient aspect of humans, meaning before we were on earth, right? When we were in other star systems. And yeah. so yeah. we've experienced them, probably several of us on this planet or thousands, whatever of us on this planet have experienced them, but it would have been in lifetimes long, long, long ago because they have not been embodied for a long time. So if you think about them embodied, it would have happened many, many millennia ago. But if you think about them in energy form, then they have this, um, I know that when I'm talking to them and they have this influence um, on my practice on the brain side of things, that I'm just tapping into a very narrow part of that or a very small part of what they have to offer, right? That I do believe with the shifting that we're going through right now that I believe that their influence is going to start coming more um, or I mean, perhaps influence is in the right word, but their presence is starting to start being felt more and more here because humanity is evolving to a stage. They've also talked to me a lot about um, the process of going from being form to formless. And that is a process that all beings go through. And that's one that they've moved through from being embodied in the physical to unembodied. And that is one that human beings are going through as well, albeit it's a very slow process. It's not going to happen tomorrow. We're talking thousands of years from now, but it's a process nonetheless that we are undergoing. And there's facets of that that become accelerated in certain individuals who are spending a lot of time in different dimensional fields. Mm -hmm. So for those people who are traversing dimensions and spending a lot of time in other um, dimensional focus fields, they're starting to experience some more of those facets of becoming 
less physical. And that's the other thing that the Divinians talk about a lot. And so there's a crossover there. I'm just kind of tuning into everything as you talk about this. It feels like they were, you know, like you said, like they're distant, distant, distant cousins because they've moved on to other things, but they're like, oh yeah, let's help those guys. And so, <laughs> you know, they kind of come back with this information of like, oh yeah, we can help you with part of it um, because we don't understand the brain. And I, and I, um, you were chatting with our buddy, uh, Karin Swain, um, and I will put uh, links to your talks yeah. with Karin Swain's under this um, conversation that we're having today. But you were saying how like their, their heads got bigger because their brains kept expanding. And oftentimes when we see pictures of other extraterrestrials, their heads tend to be bigger, not always, but their heads tend to be bigger. They have the bigger eyes, whether they're, you know, gray or Arcturian. And also when you say these things, it's like saying they're human, which, well, what human are you talking about? We've got like all kinds of different humans, you know? Um, and so you see Arctur Arcturians, there are different beings within that continuum that we call Arcturian. Um, but there's this point of our evolution where we change physically because it's just part of our trajectory. What do you have to say? I feel like you have something to say about that that's kind of will help ground that in for people, like how our brain will grow. Mm, exactly. So our um, our whole physical being are under is undergoing a metamorphosis right now. And the brain is a big part of that because some of the limitation, and I think you mentioned this in the intro, some of the limitations that's been placed on humans or embedded within the human DNA um, has been in the way that our brain, it functions and expresses itself and the ability of our brain to continue to expand and to embrace um, the energy around it. So if you think about the pineal gland, which is in the brain um, and that gland that so small, but serves as that gateway between our perception of this reality, this dimensional space we find ourselves and many other dimensional realities. Because we know that when we stimulate that gland in the brain through dimethyltryptamine, we know that we are able to extend into the perception of other realities, right? So we know that if you tweak the brain just a little bit, your field of view opens greatly. Instead of just seeing the visible light spectrum, right? This very narrow window of the electromagnetic field, it gets expanded out to a much broader range of the electromagnetic field. And I think that that's truly what makes us um, you know, an empath or a sensitive or a psychic. It's the ability to expand your visual spatial, <laughs> mental feeling range into other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that most people aren't able to tap into because they haven't really spent time learning how to do that. So this is a part of what it means to be the new human with the brain, right? This is our brain expanding. This is our brain evolving. This is what humans are really capable of and meant to be doing is we're able to move into these other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. And I'm using that as a, as a way of explaining it because people are probably familiar that, you know, when you've got infrared rays, you know, you've got x-rays, you've got microwaves. So that spectrum contains a lot of different waves that, you know, you can either feel or not feel. Um, but human beings have always sort of thought, well, I can only access a small part of it. And that's because of the way our brain has been functioning. So, getting in there and allowing our brain to feel into your environment in a whole new way and interpret that electromagnetic field in a whole new way is a facet of where the human brain is going, right? This is part of what's happening. This is how we're opening and expanding and shifting. This is what I see for us. And this is what the Divinians are trying to explain. So by saying, your heads are going to expand. That's sort of like the crude <laughs> example of what's happening, but what's actually happening in the in a more interesting term is that we're going to gain all these abilities and insights and um, I would say um, awakenings on what it means to be a human. We think being a human is one thing, but and truly they see it very differently. They have a totally different perspective on what's possible. Wow. 
happen, Linda? So I'm thinking about the physical manifestation of that shift that's mm -hmm. taking place. Because I'm seeing in my clients, um, and it's something that I saw myself a ways back, that as those open up, things like dizziness occurred more mm -hmm. for me. And I'm seeing that in my clients, that they're there are these waves that they just feel like, I just feel like I just got pushed over by something and not understanding that as you start tuning into that, you're more um, susceptible if you're not aware of what it is. And even when you're aware of what it is, finding those tools to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm thinking of all of the other ways that that can show up, heart palpitations and things that we can say, we can label it as anxiety or we can label it as other things, but when, how much of that could also be your body just simply adjusting to the new frequencies that you're mm -hmm. tuning to? Absolutely. That's a very true. Good point. Because um, the way that the energy has been so chaotic this year also, and especially we're in the middle of an eclipse right now. I mean, it occurred you know, 8 a.m. at my time <clears throat> here, but it's still, you know, the reverberations of that eclipse are still happening. And so that does make uh, the energy, you know, more changeable and erratic and it can feel very, um, can make you feel nauseous or dizzy or emotionally overwhelmed or um, a lot of stuff can kind of come up or you can feel like you're on this roller coaster where you're kind of manic. Um, your, your way up, your way down. And I think that that's been one of the things that yes, people are experiencing. So you're right. It's not all rosy. Like I have all these amazing abilities. Suddenly it can also be a little scary and it can feel like you're losing control over your physical body. And that can, I think, be a little alarming at first when it starts to happen to you, because it can feel very unnerving to have your body feel like you don't have control all over it. Like and this is one of the things that I found is that when you start to have those sensations in your body and you really need to get outside and get barefoot and ground into the earth, drop your energy from your root chakra down into the earth, get connected to her energy. I practice something called the five movements, which are up on my website for free. You can see them there. Um, that helps ground the cosmic energies with the earth energies, bring it into your heart and then offer yourself up into service as that expression. I find that really helps. Um, but whatever it is that you do, whether you practice Qigong or do some kind of movement that helps move that energy through your body, um, whether you like to get into water and swim, if you can get into the ocean, if you can take a hot bath, that's another thing that helps ground and clear that energy as well. Um, but do something that moves your body and gets you connected to your body and connected to the earth. Um, that'll help that kind of energy roll through you and pass through you um, with less collateral damage, I would say, um, and help you feel reintegrated and rebalanced again. Um, movement, dancing. And then of course, we haven't talked too much about toning, but toning is something when I do my five movements, I tone at the same time. So when I'm connecting to the earth, I like to also tone. I like to, um, if I'm feeling particularly sort of out of sorts, I start toning before I'm going to do a session. I tone, you know, before today we all speak, I tone because it just um, brings my energy into equilibrium and it doesn't have to sound like anything in particular. It doesn't have to be of a particular note or frequency. It's really however, whatever sound comes out of you is purposeful and is meant for that moment because whatever sound comes out of you is a reflection of your energy field. And so if you're feeling particularly stressed, the sound that comes out of you might not sound that great, but it's authentic to what you're experiencing in that moment. And it's beneficial for you to just release that energy no, no matter what it sounds like and let it be and let it flow because if you continue to do it, you'll notice actually the tone and the quality will start to smooth out and you'll start to feel better in your body. You'll start to feel calmer, less stressed. And then you'll start to notice the tone starts to even out and sound probably a little better to your ears. Um, if you can't think of any, I just, when I do tones, you guys, have, if you've heard me um, on one of my meditations or YouTube, then you know, sometimes it sounds more melodic and sometimes it sounds more like 
a high pitched tone, depending on what the purpose of it is. Mm -hmm. But um, people can also just say, "Om" or ah, you can make a vowel sound, whatever feels like it gets the energy moving through your body is totally fine. It doesn't have to sound any particular way. I really want to emphasize that to people because there shouldn't be any barrier to you starting to hold elongated notes and vibrate through the throat, because that's really going to help your whole body come back into equilibrium through the vibrational field that moves through your vagal nerve that is going to help balance your brain and your heart and all the other organs in your body. So on that, I want to talk about, there's like three things that I want to somehow congeal together into one conversation. <laughs> one of is it, one of it, one of them is, um, you, you said in your, uh, oh my Lord, you said in your introduction or I said it best I could, uh, that you, uh, sing the song of the earth logos. So there's singing the song of the earth logos there's connecting the light codes that are in the holographic field around our genetics into our genetics. And for me, I think there are light codes within our genetics that are just waiting to be turned on. And my sense is that doing these light language, light songs, channeling this, this music, I first I wanna know what the Earth Logos song is, what that's about. And then also like being able to wake up our, our genetics, being able to wake up our DNA so we wake up the light codes that are already within the DNA. Does that, that make sense when I say there's light codes already within the DNA, right? It does make sense, right. So it's as if you've got uh, genes that aren't being expressed, meaning you've, you've got the DNA there, but there's no protein being made to do the function in the body to bring it into that next phase of ability because there's no, you know, there's no promoter sequence there. <laughs> <laughs> to take it into the technical, but there's, you know, there's nothing turning that gene on. Right. So it's the same kind of thing. It's like, you've got it there, but it's not being turned on. No one's flipping the switch on. And I do believe absolutely that there's sections of our DNA and you'll probably have heard that people have talked about um, portions of the DNA being functional and then parts of it being called junk DNA. And I do believe that in these stretches of DNA that we have not assigned value or um, function to, that there is a lot going on in there. Not only have we been intercalating and integrating um, the, the biomes of other organisms on this planet throughout our evolution that carry information and carry ability with them. But also um, there's sections of DNA that I believe have been embedded. And I think that we've had a lot of, I would say intervention and interaction with our DNA code from different beings that have come to um, either help humanity or sort of stifle humanity, depending on what it is that they wanted from humanity. Um, you know, in, in however they wanted to interact with us or see us blossom and grow, right? There's been different beings that have, a lot of different beings that have been here who've had different agendas. So depending upon that, our DNA has been muddled with quite a fair bit. If you think about sort of early ancestral humans and then the human being that we see now who is capable of these very intricate and highly evolved thinking and thought patterns and science and quantum physics and deductive reasoning and accessing and tapping into multidimensional spaces. That is a very different human from Homo sapiens sapien who was here 150,000 years ago. So we know that a lot happened in between beyond just an agricultural society, society coming in and, you know, <laughs> the expansion of the brain because of the ability of um of ourselves to you know get access to food in the way that we um got finally access to food so what i'm trying to say is that we have evolved in ways that is beyond just what typical evolution would amount to beyond all of that but that there are aspects of ourselves that yes are ready to be turned on and i do believe that walking through this gateway on december 21st is going to activate some of that dormant dna and that doing things like meditation and toning 
and intention and engaged in, engagement in your environment and tapping into and feeling energy and uh, working with um, visiting um, multidimensional spaces. And I'm just bringing, I'm just listening to Mari talk for a second here. I'm just going to take a moment to let her bring something in. She's saying, what we're feeling right now is beyond what we have experienced in the past and is something that it will take a moment for many of us to get used to, but that what is happening, what is awaiting for us on the other side of the gateway on the 21st is a whole new way of expressing our DNA and expressing our lives and expressing our emotions that we have not yet participated in or had the opportunity to participate in before this time. So yes, some very exciting things are coming in just a few days from now. Um, and the way that we're going to express ourselves on all levels, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, our DNA. It's funny that actually scientists say, call it DNA expression when a DNA is replicating itself and making a protein. That's what they call DNA expression. But to me, expression is so much more in the way Mari describes it. Expression is really the whole interaction you're having with your energetic field. And so this is the way she's talking about human beings are going to be expressing themselves in a whole new way. And we're going to be accessing those codes of DNA that have lined dormant all of this time. And there are many, many, here's the other thing that I want you guys to all understand that there are so many beings around all of us right now. Now you, we've always have our, your cadre of, of helpers and angels and everything around you, right? But it is beyond compare right now. It's like there's stadiums and stadiums and football fields full of these beings that are here for the show to watch this, to watch humanity. And it's not just humanity, it's earth. Earth is moving through this phase too. This is a really, really, really big deal. Yeah, this, okay. this gateway that's happening on the 21st. And it's going to be the start of what we've all been talking about, the new human. And our DNA is going to vibrate differently. And so toning now and then toning on the other side of the 21st will probably have slightly different effects on your DNA, right? But it's, it's going to be more and more useful and important and ah, amazing to do toning after the 21st because it's going to really highlight and open up those aspects of ourselves that we didn't have access to before. So that coincides, and I know that uh, our friend Karin Swain talked about this and other Australians that are in the know have talked about this. There's some like, and I'm gonna, forgive me everyone from Australia, I don't mean to mangle this. There's <laughs> some <laughs> box, it's in their sacred, it's like this really interesting structure that's in Australia. It's a, it's like Uhuru or uh -huh. did I say it right? Yeah, I I'm believe winning. so. Okay. If I, if I didn't say it right, I apologize. But like, so there's like, there's this box, this is cosmic box that was given by Palladians, which sounds so woo woo. Right. But again, it's coming in from different angles. Different people are saying this from different places who don't have a connection to each other. So there's some opening on the 21st and I, yes. my legs are tingling as I can feel it. So it's something that's happening that is um, a, a shift. And as you talk about it, I can tune into it, which is why my, I'm like, Bleh! at the moment, I'm kind of vibrating. But I, I wanted to hear like then about the earth song, the earth logos that you sing in because again, oh my God, we have got to get reconnected to the planet. You've said it, other people have said it. We absolutely must get reconnected to the planet and stop fearing our, our biome, our own, our own like bacteria and all of our own stuff and other people's like, we've got to get past that fear and, and into yeah. this reconnection. And so what is the earth song that you sing to people that you, that you channel? Can you tell us about mm, that? Yes. And I apologize. You asked me that before and I went okay. off on some other trajectory. I, I asked you like five questions in one. So. <laughs> anyway, yes. The earth song is basically the the way it occurs to me, it's that vibratory field of the earth. And if you think about what's happening to the earth right now, and I'm just going to settle into this in, in this moment, 
what's happening to her is that she's undergoing an incredible metamorphosis as well. The reason we're undergoing a metamorphosis is because we're part of her field. We're part of her electromagnetic field. We're an expression of her, again, back to the word expression. And so as she shifts and changes, so do we, because we're constantly absorbing that energy. So the idea of singing her song is basically allowing yourself to feel into her energy, to tap into it, drop an anchor, a root, an energetic root down into her body, draw her energy up into your body, and then sing from that place, tone from that connection that you have with her. That's what I'm talking about when I am connecting to and channeling the earth logos. It's the resonant field that is emanating from her and also the earth logos represents this collection of beings that are here in residence to support her. The mantis are one. And, and we know that there are mantis that are not connected to the earth as much, but this group that I work with are connected to the earth. Um, there's other beings. When you um, listen to people who have done work in deep caves of the earth they talk about interacting with other beings it's not just reptilians there's there's a lot of beings that are here that have been part of the earth experience for many thousands of years we're sort of relative newcomers i believe and so um there's a whole, whole resonant energy field that gets created by all of the, those beings that are celebrating the shift and moving through this with us and with earth. And that is what you draw up into you and express when you tone after connecting to the earth and recognizing, as you said, that the whole Gaian system, the earth system, all the energy system, all of the beings, that's a part of fundamentally who we are. That's what we are because we're here in physical right now. And so anything we do that is, um, I would say murderous <laughs> to that system. Anything we do that doesn't honor that system is literally us turning our backs on ourselves. It's, it's like earth is the mirror to us. And so when we don't honor and cherish and nurture earth, we are not honor nurturing and cherishing ourselves and our home. It's like, it's like, you know, doing very bad things to the home that you live in and expecting that home to look perfect and serene for you all of the time, despite the total abuse. Right. Right. It's a relationship. Mm -hmm. it is a, it's, it's a relationship, relationship for sure. Yeah. That's a relationship. And it's um, one that we should be in reverence to earth for getting to be a part of, like we're really here at her behest. We're also here at the behest of her helpers who are the microbes of this planet. Really, we're here because we are a very advanced and um, I would say evolved form of a microbe, really. But that's her fundamental unit of life on this planet is the cyanobacteria, right? That's the fundamental unit of life. And from that evolved many, many, many things. We are one of those branches of evolution. Wow. That's just, it's so humbling to think it kind of puts us in our place that we're one of the, the microbes. We're part of her, her, her microbiology and we're one of the mic, like sentient. I mean, they're, they're all sentient to a degree, right? But like we're kind of the rebellious sentient microbes who think <laughs> that we're at the top of the food chain and on all this BS that's completely disconnected to reality. And we've run amok. Like the ego connected with this biome or with this mic bio mic micro say it for me exactly microbiome mm -hmm. microbiome so the ego connected to the microbiome got like the, that got infected with this ego and got all high and mighty over nothing and created all this chaos and i know that it's much more complex than that but that's just kind of breaks it down where it's like we are you know we are allies we are servants we are coexisting um i had a profound experience this summer where i had grown i had grown up i told linda about this but I had really grown up kind of like afraid to be alone um, by myself when I was a little kid. And the, you know, being out in nature was scary to me. And this summer I had like this rebirth experience where I just was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I love you and I'm here and I'm connected to you. And now I feel this like regenesis within my relationship with nature. And it's what I pray for everybody 
um, because nature is our medicine. We, are, we come from the earth, we return to the earth and the earth is our medicine. And I would love for you to just kind of speak on how to, in this time where people are afraid of their bodies and they're afraid of each other and they're afraid of all the external things of being invaded, like how can we reclaim our power in that relationship? And what does that look like when we strengthen our natural uh, biome and our immune system? And if you would just speak from your heart about that. Mm, yeah, um, and that's really important right now because especially as we're moving and shifting through all these trans positions, it's really important that we nurture and honor our bodies as well as that expression of earth. And that we come in into a cohesive, congruent relationship with earth. And in, like you said, instead of fearing what is part of the earth, we learn to work in harmony with it and in balance. And so we learn that you know, there are so many, many millions and millions and millions of viruses on this planet. And it's not so much that we need to fear viruses, is that we need to learn to heal our bodies and fortify our bodies, become resilient in a way where we can continue to have harmonious relationships with these microbes that don't take us out and bring us to the brink of death or even to our body's inability to function anymore because we're not, A, overreacting to things in our environment, if you look at how many people are allergic to things that they were not allergic to before, peanuts, um, milk, whatever it may be in the environment, there's so many more people allergic to foods now based on the way that foods are produced and based on the toxin load that we're all exposed to now, it has told our immune system that there are many, many things in the environment that are foreign and that are unrecognized and that should be responded to in a really acute way. And so our immune system has been trained to attack, trained to be on the defensive. And that is really an issue with what's going on right now with this current virus is that the body is overreacting to something that's in the environment that could have been, you know, in some people it doesn't have the same type of effect. The immune system doesn't respond to it in the same way because that person's immune system isn't geared towards being sort of over systematically sensitized because of all the toxins it's been exposed to. So what I would like for people to understand is that it's really important right now to reduce your toxin load, to make sure that you're cleaning up your tissues, cleaning up your brain, cleaning up your body, getting rid of heavy metals and also to fundamentally make sure that the energy drivers in your body, your mitochondria, which are also um, little organelles that are in every cell that produce 90% of the energy in your body, that those are nurtured and those are supported. We wanna make sure that your body has everything it needs to have an appropriate immune response. And a lot of that immune response is modulated by your microbiome, by your microbiome and your mitochondria. So your mitochondria are like another facet of the microbiome. You can think of them as like little bacterial organelles that live within the cells and create our energy. So again, there it is with the microbes really keeping us alive and making it all possible. So what can you do to support your microbiome? You can eat a very fiber rich, healthy, low toxicity diet. Organic. You can make sure you're getting plenty of healthy fats, um, not too many of those processed foods, overly, you know, like flour rich stuff that just kind of sits like cement in your gut. Make sure you're getting the things they like to eat. So you're not eating for one, you're eating for thousands. <laughs> and those thousands like fiber, and they like a whole variety of fiber, and they like lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, and they like the whole rainbow. They like the rainbow. Think of all the phytonutrients you get from the rainbow of foods. So this is all kind of basic nutritional stuff, but it can't be emphasized as being more important right now in a time when our microbiome really needs to be strong for us so that we can be resilient. And we need our, our um, mitochondrial to be really strong too. So we have enough energy to feel like we can adapt to these changes that are happening outside of us. So you will want to do things that support your mitochondria. And one of the number one things you can do is exercise. And then the other thing you can do it is eat that healthy diet. And then another thing you can do is there's some supplements you can take. They're all on my website that are also really beneficial for your mitochondria. But I would say that that's so important right now is to really help your body 
to be resilient and to work in communion energetically with your microbiome to keep your nervous system from running roughshod, right? Get a handle on those emotions, start to become the maestro of your emotional field, start to understand what that means. Why are you having these extreme emotional responses to things? How can you help ameliorate that and start to function and flow in your environment in a way that's in harmony with the earth in harmony with the microbes and in harmony with your whole emotional field? So I know that's a whole lot, but that's really, I would say, kind of sums up where people mm, should be thinking about spending some time right now to weather whatever comes. This is what's happening right now is is one virus. There's going to be more because our environment is so toxic, right? So there's going to be lots more to come. So let's, instead of being afraid of it, let's start to learn how we can be healthy despite what's happening around us. Yeah, I think that is so powerful to realize this People are like, oh, 2020, it was so hard. And I'm like, oh my God, that was just, a, that was a teaser. That was a teaser. Like yeah. things are here for radical change and it's for you to own your space. It's for you to take up all of your space to become, I use the word a lot, but sovereign in your body and sovereign in your thoughts. And am I perfect at it? No, you know, but it's something I get to be challenged with every day. And, 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 and to not be like, oh my God, tomorrow I have to make a 180 degree change and I get it all like, no, like have a conversation with your body, have a conversation with your emotions. If when you start doing something good for yourself and you're like, oh, that felt really good. The thing that you were doing that didn't feel so good, that starts to fall away. And it's like, it's like you start to embrace a habit at a time, a nice habit that feels nourishing and self-care at a time. And the things that weren't, they just start to like crumble and fall away because all of a sudden now you find you're in the stream, you're in this relationship to a healthy lifestyle to a healthy um digestive uh system like all the things that impact you you've started to make inroads on all the things as opposed to i have to change it 180 degrees overnight like be loving to yourself as you transform be steady but be loving you know mm -hmm. absolutely because you don't want to create stress stress in your system by trying to be healthy <laughs> right so absolutely that's a really good point yeah. Yes. And, uh, so we, uh, we're like at an hour and a half, but, and I could just go for another hour and a half more, but I wanted to ask you, and you can say no to this because this is, I did not ask you before the show, but I wanted to ask. And so anything you say is okay. Would you be willing to um, do some sound work with us as we sure. Would you? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Of course. Okay. It's like <laughs> birthday bonanza bonus. I know, right? It's your birthday. I can't say no to you. Come on. <laughs> you could, right. but I'm glad you're not. And so. I think actually that it's also a really good thing to do during the eclipse energy because it will help um, all of us to um, emotionally and energetically ride through this last sort of bit of um, chaotic energy. Yeah. And it's not to say that um, and one thing, one little word of caution, I want to add to all this stuff. I'm talking about a lot of the potentials that are coming and a lot of, you know, kind of like closing that chapter of everything that's happening. It's not that you'll never experience another, you know, difficult, emotional, um, interlude <laughs> again, or have something come up. That's difficult. We've got the holiday coming for goodness sake. Right. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but along those lines, I, I would like to say that the opportunity is here for us to experience those types of difficult emotional experiences in a new way and to process things in a different way. And I do believe that doing things like toning and what we're about to do right here together is one of those ways that helps us to do it in that new way and experience energy in life in that revised, more expansive and new potential way. So just wanted to add that. Don't worry if you start to feel like, oh no, she said it was supposed to be like this and it's not like that for me. It's okay. It, it is, it is. And things are happening that you're not aware of too. So don't worry. It's all, it's all happening just like it's supposed to. It's already happening. You're already in it. Too exactly. late. You're already in it. <laughs> don't worry too about late. it. You're on, you're on the bus and it doesn't stop. Okay. So let's close our eyes and take a moment to feel into your body with the breath. Take some nice 
deep breaths in through your nose. Release out through your mouth. And Mari says she wants to bring this energy today and expand our heart field. So as we're closing down this eclipse and feeling those emotions rolling through us today, she wants to bring a little love and expansive energy right into the center of our heart to help us to feel that compassion and love for ourselves as we move through these energetic shifts. Breathing into the body. Allow yourself to anchor your energy into the earth. So drop some energy down from your root chakra and see it flow down to the earth and feel it flow through her layers and move swiftly down to her core and connect into her energy field. And we send her gratitude. And she flows her energy back up through that cord up to your body. We invite that energy in and it flows through our bodies. Feeling that earth energy flow through your chakras, out through each of your energy channels to all of your meridians filling you up from top to bottom, toes to fingertips, top of the head. And now connecting to the center of your heart, place a hand upon your heart, breathe into your heart. Begin thinking about something that puts a smile on your face, a connection you made with another person, a beautiful vista that you saw. A beautiful comment someone made to you, something that brings you back into that space of loving compassion for yourself.
take some nice deep breaths in through the nose, all the way down to the belly and out through the mouth. Releasing into the full acceptance of all that you are, aligning to the path of all you have been, all you are now in this moment and all you will be. You are beautiful, you are loved, you are cherished and honored, you are seen. This is your truth. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're That's welcome. beautiful. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, that had like strong Native American feel to it. Did you feel that, Linda? Yeah, because I was hearing some of the same words of the chant that I do that I learned was calling calling my ancestors. Yep. I think that's true because I think the Native Americans have been singing the song of the earth for thousands of years and all indigenous people from all over the world have. They had ears to hear it. They stepped into that vibratory field. They understood it. They felt it. They knew it. And we're only now in the last, you know, couple hundred years for us people that have not been walking that path of the indigenous of this world we're starting to remember and to hear it again and to connect to it and bring it back to the surface and back to share it with others and yeah awesome. again it's like it it that song exists like you just channeled it but it exists and so someone can channel that same exact, exact song who's never heard it before because that song exists. It's, it's alive. It's real. It's part of what the earth is singing into her skin, into her pores, out through her body, into the trees. Like that is one of her songs that she sings and we all have access to it. Um, so, yeah. All right. So I, I want to say these last few things, everyone. You are welcome to, if you enjoyed this conversation with Jaylene and Miss Linda and myself, um, please share it. You are welcome to like and subscribe. You are welcome to hit the notification bell. So when these talks go live, it, boom, it shows up for you. We have Miss uh, Jaylene's information down below. So you can go to her website and it has more of her work there and you can work with her directly, obviously. Um, and also we have a little thing. If you want to give us a little donation and buy us a cup of coffee, a virtual cup of coffee, you can do that and help us support us on our way. And we have a Facebook group as well that we invite you to come and um, share and have fun with us there. Um, did you have any last things that you wanted to say, Miss Linda to Jolene or any last thoughts at all before we um, give Jolene the, I keep calling Jolene, Jaylene, Jaylene. <laughs> God love me. Um, before we give Jaylene the, um, the baton. Well, adding to the housekeeping stuff, make sure that if you like this, like, share, subscribe, all of those things, but also comment. We love to hear comments on YouTube, not just Facebook, but we also love it on YouTube because it helps it be promoted to other people. Um, reach out and share and, and also be willing to give us ideas of, things that you like to see and like to have more of and we always like to have follow-ups so make sure if you have other additional questions that you reach out to Jaylene and or any of us to to really dig into this deeper to whatever level you want. Well said. And also, if you were commenting today, <laughs> we, if during our live stream, Jillian, who is our engagement gal, she was not able to make it. So I apologize. We're not able to connect, connect with you directly on the, the live stream um, chats, but you can always meet us in our Facebook group, our Third Eye Salon on Facebook, and share your thoughts there. Um, Ms. Jaylene, uh, any closing thoughts, um, inspiration, anything that you'd like to share with us before we head out? 
Just want to say thank you so much for having me here today. Happiest birthday to you. I think it's amazing you're having your birthday on the solar eclipse. I mean, really, you were born for this, Kat. <laughs> Finally, all these years right? later. It all aligned for you today. Um, and I just want to send um, a big hug out to everybody. Thanks for listening. And <clears throat> if you have any questions, you can send me an email also at info at jaylenetracy.com. I think you may have a uh, link to that in the show notes and also to really, really try to as much as possible, just enjoy what we have coming up, this energy portal that we're about to move through on December 21st. A lot of us have been working very hard and diligently to release that, which needs to be released in order to really take advantage of this. And so we're walking through a really momentous time right now and do so with joy because your guides are all around you and they are extremely joyful and excited for the potential of all of us and all of humanity. And that even though there might be a bifurcation, there will also be a tidal wave of incredibly um, emergent and positive flow of energy from one portion of humanity that will absolutely, absolutely affect the rest and will continue to lift. Hope floats all boats, as they say, and good energy frequency also raises the frequency of all as well. So I see lots of good things coming for humanity. Yes, the change will continue. And yes, there might be some challenges ahead. But on the whole, if you fast forward 100 years, you will see a really, really good outcome. And that's what I really hold the potential and the vibration for. Excellent. Well said. Thank you so much for being here. Um, just thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, I feel like there was one other little last quick thing I wanted to say. Oh, gosh, darn it. That's okay. Um, yeah, please reach out to Jaylene through her, her website for more information. She's got chalk tons of information uh, for people there. So, um, all right. Thank you, everyone. Bless everyone. And please be kind to yourself and be even kinder to others. Okay. It's, it's a lot of transition and the love you share is the love that heals the world. So thank you. Blessings. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye everyone.